Hi, this is Dan Malloy with video number two of the Advanced GMAT Quant Series. We have a batch of widgets which cost P plus fifteen dollars for a company to produce and each batch sells for P times nine minus P dollars. For which of the following values of P does the company make a profit? And we have multiple choice. So we can write an expression for the company's profit. We know how much they sell for, call that the revenue and we know how much it costs to produce a batch of widgets, that's the cost. So for the business people out there, profit is revenue minus cost. So pretty quickly we can write a profit function, p as a function of little p, right, which is the um, batch number of batches of widgets. So revenue is, and I'm going to distribute this as I write it down, so I'll write that as 9p minus p squared minus the cost, which is p plus 15. Don't forget your grouping symbols. That would be um, an easy mistake to make. And then let's just simplify this algebraically. Um, we have, I'm going to put the um, highest order term first minus p squared and then we'll have 9p minus p which is plus 8p and then we have uh, minus 15 if you distribute the negative so that is our profit function so all we have to do is figure out which of these five choices make that expression positive and we have our answer um, we could probably factor this I'm not uh, let's see minus yeah, minus 3, minus 5. Let's do that real quick, actually. If we set this thing equal to 0, we can multiply everything through by negative 1 so that we get a leading coefficient on the quadratic term of 1. So then this would become p squared minus 8p plus 15 equals 0. And then if we factor that, we'll get p minus 3 p minus 5 equals 0 and then we notice that p equals 3 and p equals 5 both lead to this expression equaling 0 and we want to know for which value p the company makes a profit so 3 and 5 it does not make a profit it uh, it breaks even, right? Because if this expression if this expression equals zero, then their profit was zero. So it could be that they lose money when they do four units and they make money at six and seven, but then we'd have two answers. So it's more likely that they lose money when it's six or seven widgets and they make money when it's four widgets. So I l I like to bring up those methods of reasoning sometimes because it can shorten problems. Um, I just want to say that again to really stress that point. Without even plugging in 4, you can know for sure that it's the answer because if they're making money at 4, then that's the answer, and then they're losing money at 6 and 7. If they're making money when it's 6 or 7 widgets, that means they're losing money when it's 4, four widgets, but then 6 and 7 would both satisfy having a positive profit, and they can't both be the answer on a multiple choice test. Anyway, this problem is quick enough that you could just plug it in. So let's go ahead and verify that 4 does make for a positive solution. And remember, we're plugging back into the original here. We don't want to get caught up plugging into uh, one of these adaptations. So plugging in 4 here, we get negative 4 squared, which is 16, plus 8p, which is 32, minus 15 is 1, which is greater than 0. So we know that is absolutely the correct answer. 4 is the best choice and if you want to satisfy yourself you can plug in 6 and 7 as well and um, make sure that they give you negative answers.